Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth and it's my privilege to share with you today. Um, in a moment we're going to be looking at the shepherds um, being visited by the angels and then them going to Bethlehem. But before we get into the passage, let's just pray. Lord, I pray that this um, time together, looking at your word, I pray that you'd reveal what you want to us. Lord, I pray that our hearts and minds would be open to a fresh understanding of this Christmas story. Amen. Okay, let's read from Luke chapter 2, starting from verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. So there's a couple of things that I just want to pick out from this passage. It must have been incredible. It's not surprising that the shepherds were terrified. Um, and as we heard from Tim on Sunday, um, do not be afraid was a core message um, ringing out from the angels. They were bringing a good news of great joy. So the angels come and they bring this invitation to the shepherds. They give them this message. And we know that shepherds were the lowest of the low in society. We know from Jesus talking about himself that a good shepherd was somebody who was willing to lay down their life for their sheep, uh, for their flock. So we know that if shepherds' job was to lay down their life for the sheep, it shows how uh, little importance the, sh the shepherds themselves actually were. And yet the angel appears to them to bring them this message. It's a message for all people, for all times and in all places. And we know that. And we understand that, especially in the light of salvation with Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. But it is important that the message was born, brought to them. It says a, a saviour, someone who, to say, who was going to save them, has been born to them, to the shepherds. It was for them, as well as for all the important people and for everybody else as well. In verse 11, we get real rich language that the, the original hearers would have made a lot of. We've got the town of David, so that was Bethlehem. They knew that that was the place that they were expecting the Messiah to come from. It was going to be the ancestor of David, and David's town, of course, is Bethlehem. He's going to be a saviour, not necessarily the saviour from the Roman Empire that the people were, um, were wanting and hoping for, the Jewish people were looking forward to, but a saviour who was going to save them from sin. And then we've got the word Christ. He is Christ, which means anointed one um, in the Greek. And in Hebrew, that word is Messiah, that chosen one, the one that they were all waiting for. But as I've already said, the Saviour has been born to them, to the shepherds, and therefore to everybody. And the word the Lord, that was usually reserved for God himself, and later on, we see it more in common usage when referred to the Messiah. And so we see the, the coming together of two ideas there, which again would have meant a lot to the original readers, but has become language that us as, as Christians in light of salvation um, on the cross have become really used to understanding together. Now it's clear from the angel's invitation that there's an expectation that the shepherds are to go and actually find the baby. So it's not just the message that this has happened, they are to go and find the baby. What an exciting time. And we know that the shepherds obviously do decide to take that up. They leave their sheep, which might have been a bit concerning, um, but they, they've decided that the, the invitation that the angels gave them was a more important quest. But it's not left there. In verse 13, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God saying glory to God in the highest 
and on earth peace for men on whom his favour rests. And I love that picture. The angel has delivered the message. That's what the angel came to do. And yet heaven can't help but break through to earth because of the excitement of the message that they've come to bring. It reminds me of um, in Luke 15 verse 10, it says that when um, somebody turns back to God, the angels can't help but praise God and celebrate when one of um, us turns back to knowledge of God because of the excitement. And it's like a doorway into heaven between heaven and earth has been opened up and the angels can't help but share their praise with the people below in earth. And then we've got later on in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 20, the, the disciples, the apostles, the people who have been persecuted, their faith as Christians, and they know that if they speak of their faith in Jesus, and Jesus has by this point died and resurrected again by the time we meet them in Acts, and yet they say, for we cannot help but speak of the things that we've seen and heard. And it's as if, again, that excitement of the knowledge of the gospel, of knowledge of God, breaks through, um, and they cannot help but speak. The angels cannot help but rejoice. And as I've already said, the shepherds go and they do. They find Mary and Joseph and the baby who is lying in a manger. Fantastic. So what can we take from this? Well, I believe that we have the same invitations that the shepherd has to go, not just to find the baby, but to find the man Jesus. Heaven broke through not just through the angels praising God, but heaven broke through to earth as God came to earth as a man. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And he walked with us on this earth for over 30 years. Not with the kings and the principalities, the important people, the Roman emperors and the soldiers. No, he walked with the least of humanity. And the least of humanity in Jesus' eyes became the greatest. Those who were willing to put their faith and their trust in him. To save them for it says um, somebody who is well doesn't need a doctor people who are poorly need doctors and it's the same for us in our salvation if we can recognize our need for a savior Jesus is that savior so I implore you to seek God and to see the windows the doorways between heaven and earth opening up in our own lives as we seek God as we seek him in prayer as we seek um, miracles and signs and, and we experience the awe and wonder of walking with Jesus on a day to day level. And I pray, my prayer for you is that you know that this Christmas time. I'm going to finish with a little bit of liturgy, which I used to love as a child growing up in the Church of England, um, a blessing. So I'll finish with this. May the joy of the angels and the eagerness of the shepherds the perseverance of the wise men and the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas time. Amen.